Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. We are here with the last classified race of the season, the last round of the X2O Badkamers Trophy in Brussels. With me here to talk about it are Isam and Twan. Hello. Hey everybody. So we were in Brussels, a race which I actually quite like the parkour. We had some interesting conditions there, some snow and a lot of ice. But nevertheless, I feel like the attention for cyclocross is down, more focus on the road season. Now, of course, some big names already left the field to prepare for the road. So before we start off to talk about the XVO Badkamer Sofei here in Brussels, I have a question for you guys. Do you guys think that the season should end with the World Championships? Obviously, the interest after World Championships is is less. Um, if you look at the road, it's basically the same. The only reason that after uh, the World Championships on the road, there is some attention is because you got those those late classics that are making it interesting. But uh, with cyclocross, obviously, you got those guys that are now the best of, of cyclocross that are going to the road, obviously, after the Worlds, because the Worlds is for them the biggest goal. And that makes cyclocross after the rules a little bit less interesting. The classifications are also set in stone a little bit. So that did make it also a little bit more silly in a way, the races. And the most important things are gone. So I don't know. I would say that maybe you should try to make to make it a little bit more interesting after the rules or just end the season one week after the rules. That That would maybe be a little bit better. Yeah, I think there's definitely a place for uh, racing after the World Championships, but eventually it just starts to get boring. Like yesterday in ACLO, you're just kind of looking at it across that. You would be looking at it like sort of excitedly if it's somewhere in the middle of the season, but it really, really doesn't matter now. Um, like it is fun that there's some snow on the course, which makes it a little more interesting to watch. But still, there's this great feeling of emptiness for me as well now with Van der Poel gone, with Van Aert gone, with Pitbull gone. Uh, at the start of the season, you really have this, this excitement um, and the anticipation as well till they are coming into the field. And now it's just kind of like you're, you're waiting for it to end. And I think it's good that we wrap up the classifications, uh, at least some of them past the world championships uh, to maybe try and tempt uh, more people into staying but i really don't feel like these crosses that are just basically one-offs have a place there because it, it doesn't really make sense i think for the riders it's still nice to have a couple of races but it's not only the road riders that left i mean riders like Honsinger, curtis white they all flew back to the states and to canada and that's not something that is now only here because they are afraid of more travel restrictions or anything because of the coronavirus it's always been like that they are often as soon as the world cup ends they are nowhere to be seen anymore they only race the world cup sometimes they fill it up with a couple of other races but their main focus is the world cup the world cup ends the week before the world championships so i think the hype is down and i think it's also part of the sport being very focused towards belgian belgium because the belgians they are here they race they seem to enjoy these type of races but on the other hand you also see riders getting more and more tired riders lacking motivation at least that's what i've seen that some riders they really don't look to be motivated so i think it's there's things to say for both sides yes it could stop at the worlds because the interest drops significantly after but from the perspective of the riders maybe we should be looking at seeing why do these riders leave immediately and what can we do to change that anyway we should now go on to talk about the last race of the xco badkamers trophy here in brussels is on what happens in the men's race so yeah, it was a fast start from the Tormans uh, team with uh, Quinten Hermans and Corné van Kessel that had a very fast start. Uh, behind them, it was actually also Lauren Zweig that was going pretty well, but in the first lap he was tangled up uh, with the barrier and uh, couldn't really get out of it, lost a chunk of time, and that actually cancelled his chances uh, for a good result. It was actually a pretty bad day for the Pau Sausen uh, team. They were not really up there in, the, in this men's race and they wouldn't really play a role in this race for the podium. Donarts, however, was very strong and actually joined the two uh, in the first lap and actually left them also behind in the second. He thought that his pace was faster than the others and left them behind. Uh, behind them, it was Niels van der Putte that had a very strong race. He was riding at that moment in fourth. Van der Putte was 
eventually able to catch Corne van Kessel that was dropped a little bit from Quinten Hermans to get the third place. But in front, it was Stonarts that was actually leading comfortably till he had a puncture. And then Quinten Hermans was allowed back uh, to Stonarts. And uh, then we had a little battle for the lead, actually. Uh, Quinten Hermans put Stonarts a little bit under pressure. It seems that maybe that puncture cost him a little bit of time. Uh, but then Tonars fought back and showed that he was the strongest there. Uh, and Tonars was eventually able to win uh, in Brussels with Quinten Hermans in second and a very strong Niels van der Putten in third. So Tonars here today taking home that victory, his fourth victory of the season, also consolidating that second place in the XVO trophy for this season. I think he can be satisfied with this result. I think he was the strongest. We saw it when he was with the two Tormans guys and he broke away from them with quite some ease. He had a lead comfortably until that puncture, of course, and after that he quickly managed to reopen that gap. I just think, all with all, he was the strongest today. Yeah, I think I think Tonaz was really the the strongest today, and he was he he showed that um, in, in this race, I guess maybe he was a little bit overwhelmed with the start of uh, Hermans and um, Van Kessel, uh, but he came back very strong, and after that he just put on a very high pace. And I have to say, also in the technical part, Stone Arts was actually doing pretty well. So I think he, he rode a very good race and showed that he was uh, the strongest today. Yeah, I mean, I, I can only agree with that as well. Um, I was really worried about lo- uh, after last week that it was going to be a very boring Bowles uh end to the uh, season. But um, this weekend has been really mixed up and uh, Stone Arts taking a uh, well-deserved victory. I think it was really well deserved as I already explained earlier but I also think that there's a fair thing to say for the performances of the Tormont guys not only today not only yesterday but basically ever since the world championships they are seeming to make the most out of it we've already talked about it that it's good for the sponsor exposure to get that here but once again Herman second I mean the performance of Van Kessel doesn't really show because of that puncture really unfortunate timing as well ending 16th but I think the Tormans riders once again did a solid race and I don't know potentially Van Kessel could have challenged after that puncture of arts but once again really hard to tell because Van Kessel after that puncture pretty early on in the race his race was over yeah I agree I mean it I think Van Kessel already was struggling a little bit, but because if we are using the logic of of a claw, there was going to be a drop somewhere in his pace along along the race. But obviously, that does hurt your chances even more. I think for for Hermans, it's just it's just become a very good weekend. This was somebody that actually didn't want to do a claw, but then just added it last minute that race into his schedule because he was motivated and he really wanted to make the best out of his of his last races and you know it pays off in a way and it really shows that he is uh, probably the one that is the most motivated but also getting into shape for a road season because for him it's going to be also a very important road season with a, a world tour team a pro world tour team well, of course, we're riding the Giro d'Italia, and I do not know what his goals are there, but I can imagine that he will be in the breakaway in some medium mountain stages, as we've seen him do before in the Criterium du Dauphiné. So we'll keep an eye out on him. It will be interesting to see what he can do. Something that was certainly the most interesting as well was the race of Niels van der Putte. He was in fourth place for quite some time until that puncture van Kessel, and then in third for the rest of the race. I think he rode a Really surprisingly good race here, beating riders like Van Tournout, Isebiet, Van de Haar. Third, really strong performance for the under-23 rider. Yeah, I, I think that uh, that Van de Putte was really, really strong today. Uh, obviously, he, he he is a talent. He is somebody that we already know that can do good things. He was, like I said yesterday, disappointed in in the Worlds, but bounced back from it and had a very strong race in A-Clo behind the three that were on the podium. and. I think today he just showed again a very strong performance. Obviously, this parkour is technical and very slippery, and that is something he excels in. He's a very uh, technical rider. He's almost a stylist on, on his bike, and it's very nice to, to, to look at him going on his bike, seeing what he does in the turns, and a very deserved third place, and someone we have to look forward to in the coming years.
Yeah, it's uh, very good what he's been doing here. Of course, had that nasty injury, uh, which uh, took him out for uh, uh, one and a half month, uh, which was very unfortunate. Has been riding a good season and really mo making the most of this uh, post-world championships uh, period to get some really nice results in and uh, get some more points for starting places as well. Let's run down here to our top 10 then. Aarts Hermans van der Putten was the podium in front of Jens Adams, Van Toornhout, Isabiet, Lars van der Haag, Kevin Kuhn in 8th, Hans Week in 9th and Timo Kielich in 10th. So, a question here for Twan. What do you think of the performance of the Paul Sauze guys? Van Toornhout 5th, Isabiet 6th and Zweig 9th. A lot worse than where they were last weekend when they were 1, 2 and 3. Yeah, it, I think it's really disappointing. Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed the racing a little bit more because of it. Um, they were truly dominant the week before as well. Uh, it seems like they have mistimed their form a little bit, um, as they were amazing uh, in that week uh, past the World Championships. And now uh, everything is just sliding off, coming behind riders like Jens Adams. This is really not a thing they uh, should uh, be doing uh, even at the end of the season. And then, Issam, what did you think of Jens Adams, who went fourth here? I think, personally, he rode a pretty anonymous race. He was always in that group for the fourth place, but not really showing himself until in the last lap. Yeah, I agree. I mean, obviously, it is also not a place where the cameras will put the most focus on. Uh, but I think he, he just rode a very consistent race. Obviously, didn't do the complete season. Uh, was out for a while, then came back. Was actually showing some good races after his comeback. I, th I thought that he would be able to maybe sneak in that World Championship selection. That wasn't the case. And he's just trying to finish off his season strong. And with the fourth place, I think that is a way of uh, making your, your season a little bit more complete than it already was. For the rest of the riders in the top 10, I don't think there is really a lot we can say about it. Van der Haar, 7th place, decent despite his uh, mild injury that he had because of his crash yesterday. Kuhn, solid performance and Kielich also a solid performance. Then we can go on to talk about the women's race, a race where the classification was still on the line. Lucinda Brandt, the world champion, came here with a lead of 41 seconds over Denise Betsema. And remember, in the XVO Trophy, it's the classification on time, and at the end of the first lap, there's 15, 10, and 5 bonification seconds. So the start was going to be crucial, but it was Eva Lechner who had that fastest start, not any of the Dutch riders. But towards the end of the lap, Lechner had already dropped down the field quite significantly, and it was Alvarado who attacked. Behind Alvarado, it was K who took away 10 bonification seconds behind Alvarado who then took the 15 and Betsma only managed to take 5 seconds. Seconds that would turn out to be crucial towards the end of the race because Alvarado from there on went pretty comfortably, at least that's how it looked, in the lead. She opened a gap of 20 seconds and it yo-yoed between 20 and 10 seconds for almost the entirety of the race until Betsema, who was in a big group behind with Bakker, Brandt and Worst and K for a while. It was uh, Betsema who attacked there in the penultimate lap of the race. She opened a 10 second gap for Brandt and it looked that Brandt was going to take home the victory in the overall. But in the last lap, there was some pretty dramatic moments as Alvarado crossed the line to take the win. Betsema came close, 6 seconds, and Brandt in the final probably quarter of a lap couldn't clip into her pedal anymore. And that made it really close. She missed out um, on that third place where she was in against Bakker. Also got overtaken by Van Empel. She ended 5th and she held on just to a 5 second lead in the end. She was pretty angry after afterwards because she thought she'd missed the win but luckily for her she made it complete. She completed the Grand Slam and won all classifications and the World Championships. But it was Alvarado who won the race in front of Betsema and Bakker. Well, where do we start? I think we should start off with that battle for the overall classification here. Betsema against Brandt. What's your guys' thought on the race between those two today? My God, I when because in the last lap we were seeing. I think Betsema had a lead of probably. I think it was 10, 15 something seconds on 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 Brandt. It was definitely not going to be enough for a classification. And then we saw a shot of Betsema crossing the line. Uh, and then we saw Bakker, and then he was like, 
where is Brandt? And then Van Empel came, and then there was a little bit of confusion where, where Brandt would be, but Brandt came around the corner, and it was at the end very close. And then you would ask yourself, could Betsema have done a little bit more to get those seconds in, in, in the first lap, those bony seconds? Just I, I don't think that she wasn't able to at least be in front of K um, in, in the first lap. And if you would have got there five seconds that alone could have been already uh, a little bit more crucial for the, for the for the results at the end. Yeah, of course it could have been. Um, I I am happy though that Blond wins it. I I think um, whilst um, material of course is a part of the sport, it would be a very nasty way of doing the classification and quite a significant amount of money as well. Um, although of course Betsma has been riding very strong throughout the season, so it wouldn't have been a total robbery, but uh, it certainly wouldn't have felt uh, like the nicest victory I can imagine. I think Lucinda Brandt at first was pretty angry because she thought she'd lost it, and she is here the first one to ever make it a Grand Slam in the women's cyclocross field in the history because, of course, the Super Prestige hasn't been there for women that long. The first season that was was 2010-2011 or 2011-2012. Don't correct me on that one, but... Either way, I think that when Sven Nijs told Brandt that she was the winner and that she looked at the time and it was actually the time against Alvarado, she was pretty happy and, of course, who can blame her? 30,000 euros added to the bank account with this win. Then we had Seindo Carmen Alvarado, of course, the winner here today. If someone already said it off record yesterday when we were taking a look at the start list, we expected Alvarado to win and she didn't disappoint us here. Isam, did she? Yeah, she didn't. And I think my prediction should become off record uh, for the following uh, races instead of on record because it seems that then they don't have that much bad luck. But um, I think it was it was a little bit clear that obviously Brandt was feeling the fatigue of the whole season. Uh, Betsema was on fire but obviously had to dig deep to get that win in Aclo and Alvarado had only one race uh, this weekend so for her it was very easy to focus on the race she also likes I think uh, one of the first times actually at the elites that she won was probably in Brussels I'm not really sure but I think it was uh, it was definitely then a, a really good demonstration and that decided her to in the end uh, go for the elite world championships and win it as well in Dubendorf. So I think that she is definitely, you know, somebody that is um, very technical, maybe one of the most technical in, 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 in the women um, division. And she just showed it today. She was in control of the race and never really was in doubt of losing this race. I think what you said about the parkour is also a very fair point. She does seem to like this parkour and she said in the interview as well that it is one of her favorite parkourses. So I think that that definitely played a role as well. And then Tuan, for you the question about the race of Manon Bakker. What did you think about that? It was just another very solid performance again showing that she is one of the best uh, U23 riders. Um, even if she wasn't able to actually show it at the World Championships. Uh, yeah, just very solid. I hope for her that she can continue this next season and uh, be a serious uh, top 5, top 3 contender. Let's run down the entire top 10 then. Alvarado, Betsema, Bakker was the podium in front of Fem van Empel, Lucinda Brandt, Annemarie Vorst. Then the first rider who isn't from the Netherlands, Anna K in 7th, 8th place for Nick van Alphen, ninth for Sonnekant and 10th for Mario Norbert Ribeiro. I'd like to address the performance of Anna K here once again and once again briefly 7th place. And I think her race was pretty similar to her race yesterday. Quite a good start but fell back and today there were a couple of riders who who made use of that better than yesterday to overtake her ending 7th. Nevertheless, still a good performance. I, I think that's a general theme with Anna K. Uh, usually she is up there at the start and she slowly but sometimes very quickly starts fading. Uh, and this, uh, well, today I think is one of the better performances where she is able to keep it to a seventh place. Well, I think there's not really a lot more to say about the riders in the top 10 here. I mean, we've already 
talked about Vorster performance in the past couple of podcasts that that world championship was really uh, high for her season and that she's now struggling towards the end and we hope to see her back next season and I think that that's about it what we can say I mean no real big surprises here in or outside of this top 10 so I think it's a wrap for this episode of the cyclocross social podcast and we will be back next weekend with some more cyclocross podcast Twan and Isam thank you for being here Thanks for having me on. Thanks for listening. And next weekend we'll be back with the last podcast for the season. I will see you guys then because we have the Etias Cross in Sint Niklaas coming up and the Sluiting Spice in Oostmalle. See you guys then. Goodbye.